Need roses and they will be world class. They'll win at any fair you take them to. And they also have the beauty of, you don't have to feed them very often, not nearly as often as most people feed their roses, and they offer a little bit of pest resistance as well. Here's what I want you to do. Add one part chicken manure, one part fish meal. This is good stuff. Both the chicken manure and the fish meal will add nice dose of nitrogen. Then one part of cottonseed meal. That'll help to acidify the soil just a little bit too. Now this is one of my secret ingredients. This is kelp meal. And not only will that help your plants grow big and lush and green, remember kelp grows a foot a day, so growth hormones are going into your rows, but it also helps strengthen the cell structure of your rows. Why do you want to do that? Well, think about the sucking insects that come, like aphids, that stick their little proboscis into the rows and suck the life from it. Well, if those cells are tougher, the proboscis bends or breaks, or better yet, the aphid won't even try, he's going to go to a more sickly plant. So one part kelp meal will keep them away. And then, what do we want on our roses? Lots of flowers. So we're going to add two parts of bone meal. Bone meal is nice, it's slow acting, so it's going to give you extended blooming season. Now, after you've mixed that all up, simply pour it into a big measuring cup. And I want every 60 days, put one to two cups of this onto your roses, depending upon the size. If you've got big, huge, well-established roses, use two cups. For your newer roses, just one cup and work it well into the soil around the rows. Now, mid-season, you've already fertilized your rows, but mid-season you want to give it just a little bit of a, a pickup. What you're going to do is go to the cupboard and get brewer's yeast. What you want is about two tablespoons of brewer's yeast into a gallon of water. We're going to use this as a soil dunk. Mix it around in there real well. Warm water will work even better to activate some of that yeast. And then use it as a soil dunk around your roses and they will be greener, lusher, with prettier blooms in the middle of summer. One day you walk out to your roses and they're absolutely beautiful. The green is a deep green. The blossoms are big and beautiful. The next day you walk out and suddenly you turn over a leaf and find little orange dots all over the bottom of the leaf. Or maybe a few of the tops of the leaf have a milky white fogginess to them. Well, underneath, that's rust. On top, that's mildew. And those are two things that will ruin a beautiful rose very quickly. They start to show up during those cloudy days of spring or summer when the humidity starts to increase. And they really can make a beautiful rose not so pretty anymore. But they're easy to take care of with something we're going to mix up right here. First of all, you want about two quarts, half a gallon of water. And to that, we're going to add one tablespoon of baking soda and about three tablespoons of horticultural oil. What that does is make it actually stick to the leaves as you spray it on there. And then we're also going to add one tablespoon of kelp extract. That just gives it a little feeding while you're doing the spray. Mix that all up real well and put it into a sprayer and go to work spraying both the affected leaves and the unaffected leaves to protect them from a similar fate. Now, there is an old wives' tale that really is not much of a problem. Well, the wives' tale may be a problem, but what it says is not a problem. The wives' tale is that you should never spray water onto your roses. Hogwash, spray away. It actually helps to wash away some of the insects that will infest our roses. And it also washes away some of the spores of molds and funguses and rust that can get on our roses. There is one rule, though. Never spray your roses late in the day, because when they go to bed at night, you want them bone dry. There was also a wives' tale that if you spray it during the heat of the day, that those little water droplets will act like uh, magnifying glasses, and the sun will shine through and burn your roses. Well, that sounded too good to be true, so I tried that. It doesn't happen at all. Go ahead, spray your roses. You'll spray away a lot of the problems. Now my absolute favorite rose tip, but for this, you'll have to join me in the garden. OK, I want you to pay very close attention because this can be tricky. Now, if you are a rose grower, I believe you should also be a banana eater. Not only is it good for you, potassium and all that, 
Eventually, as a rose grower, when you have nice, fresh, young growth like this, you're going to get nice, fresh, young aphids all over it. They will come. And to get rid of them, okay, pay attention here. You take a banana peel and drop it at the base of your rose. That's pretty much it. The aphids will leave. Now, after a few days, that banana peel is going to turn black as it begins to decompose. At that point, you very carefully, or not so carefully if you choose, come out with a shovel and take the banana peel and just kind of chop it up and work it into the soil. Before long, you won't even know it's there. Next time you eat a banana, though, come out and repeat. Your aphids will stay away.